Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on video two of a video series and academic perspective to what's happening in the macroeconomy. I'm a macroeconomics teacher, so I'm trying to teach people using the tools of macroeconomics, really the graphs, right, the models of macroeconomics, what's happening in the macroeconomy. Kind of give them some visuals and some things to hold on to as they hear people talk about what's happening in the economy. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the Phillips curve model, okay? And the Phillips curve model definitely has some good things with it, okay? But it's also got some drawbacks. It's got some flaws. Remember, I like to tell people, guys, all models have flaws. Some models are useful. In that first video we shot, we looked at the ASAD model, and guess what? It had some flaws too, but I think it's a pretty useful model. This one has some flaws, but I still think it's a pretty useful model. So let's get to it, the Phillips curve, okay? We want to start off when we're looking at graphs, we want to look at the axes, okay? On this one, let's start with that vertical axis right here. We've got the inflation rate, the rate of change in prices. Which right off the bat, this is kind of like a really good thing about the Phillips curve model. It's kind of an advantage on the ASAD model, is we've got the rate of change in prices, okay? In the ASAD model, we just had the price level on the vertical axis. And all the ASAD model could basically show us is the price level rising, which is inflation, but not the rate of change, not the inflation rate. Or it could show the price level going down, which would be deflation, okay? And sometimes that ASAD model kind of likes to show deflation when we model things, even when we're not really having deflation, we're having this thing called disinflation, okay? Now, I might have lost you a little bit, but let's stick with me here. In this model, we've got the inflation rate, and so we've got the rate of change in prices, and so look, if we're at 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, all of that means we're having inflation, but we've actually got a little bit more insight, the rate of change. If we get negative, right, that's deflation, but here's the thing, this model can show disinflation, which is a really important thing to understand what's happening out there, because that's what we kind of want to happen right now, is this concept of disinflation, not deflation. Macroeconomists generally never want deflation. They don't really want prices, the rate of change in prices, to be negative. They don't want prices to be dropping. I know that's a little weird. Some of us might kind of want that right now, but macroeconomists see that as a real drag on the economy. What we want is disinflation, a positive inflation rate coming down. So there it is, disinflation, a positive inflation rate coming down, and again, Big advantage on this model, ASAD model does not have the ability to show that. On the horizontal axis, the unemployment rate. Now, we're going to jump to the ASAD model again really quickly. On this horizontal axis, we have real output. So on the ASAD model, when we were going right on that model, when our dot kind of moved off to the right on that model, the economy was improving, okay? If we move further enough right, we'd say we are booming. And if we move left, the economy was getting worse, we would be busting. Not the case with this model. See, in this model, as we move right, now we're busting, right? The unemployment rate's actually going up. So if we move this direction, that unemployment rate's getting higher and higher, we are starting to bust. And if we move to the left, we're booming, okay? So the horizontal axis is kind of flipped in regards to that ASAD model, or as in comparison to the ASAD model. So we kind of have to get used to that, really important. So I've got the bust and the boom to kind of remind us, right? Low unemployment rates, we're booming. High unemployment rates, we're busting, we're in a recession. Now, let's get to a couple other really important things. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit confusing, but there's a really important thing I'm about to say about this model. You see that dot, okay? Wherever our dot is, we're gonna say that's where we're actually at. So just right, and I know it's not, you know, June 22, we're not at that dot, we're not at 2%, but let's just kind of go back in time and say we're, you know, nine, 12 months ago, okay? So here's the deal, there's the dot. Wherever the dot is on this curve, it is our actual inflation rate. So we got that dot, we can look over here to the vertical axis, 2%, oh, that's our actual inflation rate. But here's the kind of interesting thing. If we are on this curve, if we are on this curve anywhere, our expected inflation rate is 2%, okay? So this curve is drawn in respect to what, it, what is the expected inflation rate out there. The word you're gonna hear from the Fed these days is where are inflation expectations anchored? You'll hear that word anchored a whole lot. What he's talking about is what is the expected inflation rate of the population out there? And so, here, a Phillips curve with an expected inflation rate of 2%. Now, I don't expect you to fully understand just yet, so let me kind of bring it home here. How do we know any particular Phillips curve what the expected inflation rate is for that Phillips curve if it's not written right there like I do? You go to where this red line intersects the Phillips curve, and you go over here and you say, oh, that's the expected inflation rate. Now, if you're a little confused, here it comes. If we start moving this direction, what's changing is the 
actual inflation rate changing the ex or the expected inflation rate? And the answer is the actual. If that dot starts moving this way, the actual inflation rate is going up, it's going up, it's going up. Just imagine that dot moving along that line. Actual inflation rate is going up. But again, no matter where our dot is, if it's on this particular curve, our expected inflation rate is 2%. And again, if it's not written as a subscript on the curve, how do you find the expected inflation rate of any curve? You go to where this red line is, which is right over the natural rate of unemployment, which I'll talk about in just a second, and where that intersects the Phillips curve, there you go. So what does that mean? It means if that's where our dot is, right at this moment in time for this model, not June 2022, the expected inflation rate is 2%, the actual inflation rate is 2%. Hope that makes sense. It's going to be really important where we're going here. Natural rate of unemployment, okay? The natural rate of unemployment is kind of the Goldilocks zone, okay? That's kind of what we want to be at in the economy. We really don't want to have an unemployment rate less than that because, hey, we're booming, we're running a little bit hot, we can get inflation. But we certainly don't want it more than that because we really don't like unemployment. And higher than that, hey, we're busting. We'd have this thing called cyclical unemployment, which is because of a deficiency in demand for goods and services broadly in the economy. So recession over here. So natural rate of unemployment. Now, what that compares to in the ASAD model is that thing called full employment. So here's the deal. We're at our natural rate of unemployment. We're at full employment. So important to understand that full employment to a macroeconomist is not 0% unemployment. It's probably somewhere around 4.0 to 4.5%. Okay. Again, some economists might argue outside of that range. Consensus view of economists probably today, somewhere between 4.0 and 4.5% is our natural rate of unemployment. Okay. Now, whatever that is, that natural rate of unemployment is, you just go straight up, hit your Phillips curve. Uh, okay, that's my expected inflation rate. And since my dot's there right now, it's also my actual inflation rate. Okay, a lot of stuff to get this graph, but trust me, it's going to pay some dividends here. Okay, so here's the deal. In the last 12 months or so, we've seen the inflation rate tick up. Why has it ticked up? You know, largely because a lot of spending out there, okay? Why a lot of spending? Well, we've had a lot of fiscal stimulus, okay? Over the last two years, two and a half years, we've had a lot of fiscal stimulus, so that's getting a lot of spending. Interest rates have been at 0%, basically, which has also induced a lot of borrowing and spending. Also, we've got a lot of bent up demand, right? We've had a lot of people kind of hold back during the, during the pandemic, and they've been spending in the last six to 12 months quite a bit. So we've just had a lot of spending. This graph is really good at handling changes in spending, okay? When we get changes in spending, we move along this curve, all right? Un you know, when we get more spending, and that's what I'm talking about, an increase in spending, the unemployment rate's gonna go down, but it's gonna drive inflation up. Why is that? Because when you get that more spending, QD, quantity demanded, is gonna exceed quantity supply for a bunch of goods out there, and again, that is our central cause of inflation. When QD is greater than QS, for a lot of goods out there, causing that prices to go up. So unemployment comes down, inflation goes up. I like to say spending spurs production, production spurs hiring, okay? But also spending spurs unemployment. So what's happened here is, hey, we have gone along this line. I'm gonna put a dot right there, I'm gonna put 7%. Now look, that's not June 2022, because as of May 2022, we were at 8.6%. So why am I putting 7% there? Because there's also been some supply issues, right? Whether it's because of the Russian-Ukraine war, or it's because of the lockdowns in China, or just really a dis dislocation of workers as they've kind of moved in and out of industries because of the pandemic. We've got those you know, supply chain issues, those things like that. So we've had aggregate supply, okay? Remember video one, we've had some supply shocks, okay? This graph is not so good at handling supply shocks. The way you basically have to model a supply shock in this graph is I have to change where this curve is located, which is a bit of a problem because really this curve is not supposed to shift unless expected inflation shifts. So there's a flaw in the model, right? So we got a bit of a flaw, but I still think it's useful. And we're going to go do what we have to do if we have a supply shock. We've got to shift the curve. Even if expected inflation rates really haven't changed, we kind of have to pretend like they have changed. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a new Phillips curve, because that's what would happen when you get those supply shocks. You're gonna get greater inflation rates at every unemployment rate. And then I'm gonna put a dot right there, and there we go. 8.6%, our current inflation rate. And by the way, yep, boom times. And I know a lot of people are talking about recession. Some people are saying, are we have we already entered in a recession? Y'all, here's the deal, okay? 
There's my Texas accent coming out, right, y'all? But here's the, the deal here. 3.6% unemployment rate, okay? Wow. Almost every economist out there think that's below the natural rate. That is a tight labor market. It is hard to find workers in this labor market. And that's where we're at right now. So technically, in a lot of ways, hey, yep, it's a hot economy right now. Now, it might not stay that way. Don't get me wrong, and that's what I'm going to get to. But 3.6% unemployment rate... 8.6% inflation rate, there you go. There's kind of the end of May or June, if you will, of 2022. Now here's the thing. The question is, is the Fed ahead of this thing or behind this thing? A lot of people think the Fed's already kind of missed the boat and is already kind of getting behind this thing. But let me just kind of get to what I mean by this. What does the Fed need to do, or what are we asking the Fed to do? Well, what we're asking the Fed to do is raise interest rates in the economy. And why we are looking for the Fed to raise those interest rates is to cool down the economy. I know a lot of us are like, well, I don't like the economy being cooled. Well, when you've got inflation like this, if this is the model, that's what you need. you got to cool that economy down. you got to try to tamper down on spending, okay? And so raising interest rates gets less borrowing. And guys, the only reason anybody's ever borrowed is to spend. So we're trying to raise interest rates to get less borrowing and therefore less spending. And again, Phillips Curve handles that well. By the way, let me put this over here. Phillips Curve, and let me just kind of guess. That looks like about, you know, 3.5%. I don't know if you... If you Watch that, but I kind of went to that where that red line and the new brown line intersect. I said, well, that's about 3.5, so that's what I'm writing, I'm writing right there. Not that that's our inflation rate. There's our dot. That's our actual inflation rate. Anyhow, again, Fed, tight monetary policy, tamper down on this thing, try to cool this economy off, and try to bring us right like this. And what I'm showing you, that movement right there is called the soft landing. You hear a lot of people talk about soft landing, hard landing. That's what we want. But the Fed's got to be ahead of the curve, not behind the curve. Now, what's all that language about? Ahead of the curve is they've got to cool this thing off before our inflationary expectations adjust upward, before inflationary expectations become unanchored. There it is. That's the stuff you hear out there all the time. When they say, oh, the inflationary expectations might be coming unanchored, they're saying the, our expected inflation rate, what we expect the inflation rate, is going up. That would be unanchored, okay? And that would be a big problem. Because if they're behind the curve, and guess what, you know, and, and let's just say, I should say, that, hey, what we're actually experiencing, right, there's my dot, go back to that dot again, actual inflation rate, what we're actually experiencing becomes what we expect. What we're experiencing becomes what we expect. That's really a big problem, because the Phillips curve would then change, right? And so let me go right there, dot, all right, whew. So Phillips curve, 8.6%. I know, kind of hard to follow, but hopefully you are kind of following this. That is if they're behind the curve, and those inflationary expectations got unanchored, expected inflation rate, what we expect the inflation rate actually goes up. How would they know that? They look a lot at wages. There's some other things they look at. They're looking at those wage contracts, what's happening to wages. If wages start going up by our actual inflation rate, oh my gosh, they become unanchored, and the Fed might be behind the curve. And if they're behind the curve, if that Phillips curve is already shifted up, that's what it means to be behind the curve. If we have a new expected inflation rate, we've got issues because they're going to have to bring that thing down. And what they're going to have to do, and this is a problem. What I'm showing right there is not a soft landing. This is going right over here into bus territory. This is called like our disinflation process, okay? Disinflation. Go through that process of bringing that positive inflation rate down, which is, which is painful, okay? There's this concept of the sacrifice ratio and things like that. Basically, people are going to lose their jobs as we lose GDP here. So they're going to have to force us into a recession. That's a hard landing. That's what we don't want to happen. We're hoping the Fed is not behind the curve, but a lot of people are thinking they are behind the curve, that those inflationary expectations have become unanchored. We had 40 years of being anchored around 2%. We might have lost that. That's a really big issue. And if we have, and they're getting anchored closer to that 8.6 or something around there, guys, recession's coming. They're going to have to push us off into that recession. They're going to have to hold us right there until those we get a new expectation about the inflation rate, hold us down there at 2%. So what we're experiencing, that's right, get us over here with a recession going on, yep, becomes what we expect, and that Phillips curve can then adjust back to where it was, okay? So has it shifted up? 
If it has, we're going to have to shift it down, and that is a painful process, the process of disinflation. And I hope that made sense to you, and that's kind of where we're at right now in June 2022. See you in the next video.